Praise God. Well, welcome and blessing, especially to uh, so many visitors and for uh, for those who are visiting for the first time, we welcome you and bless you and say thank you for joining us on this wonderful Christmas morning. And uh, look, I'm just going to start with a bit of a slide of something I wrote uh, many years ago, and I hope this blesses you because you see a lot of people talking about, you know, should we be celebrating Christmas? You know, is it a pagan celebration? You know, should we have a Christmas tree? Well, the end of the day, I'm not a pagan worshiper. I worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yeah. And I worship Jesus and I praise his name. And uh, I just want to share this quickly with you as we start about what does the Christmas tree truly represent? The next slide. The Christmas tree represents the cross. The tree itself represents the cross where Christ was crucified. And there's a scripture reference there, Galatians 3.13. The star on the tree represents the star which shone in the east, found in Matthew chapter 2, verse 2. The gifts placed at the tree represent the greatest gift given by God, his son Jesus. And there's two scripture references there, John 3, 16, Romans 6, 23. The lights represent the glory of God and that Christ is truly the light of the world. And scriptures there, John 8, 12 and John 9, 5. The traditional colours of red, gold, white and green, what do they represent? Well, the red represents the blood of the Saviour, Jesus, which was shed and sprinkled seven times. The gold and white represent royalty, cleansing, purification and rejoicing. And the green represents everlasting and new life. So the colours represent, next slide please, the colours represent that the blood which was shed by the Saviour has the power to cleanse us from all of our sins. I said all of our sins, yeah. making us clean and free from sin. And there's quite a few scripture references there. 1 John 1, 6 to 10, Ephesians 1, 7, and Hebrews 9, 11 to 15. So as a result of all who believe in Jesus, all who believe in him, have new birth and everlasting life. And I'm going to be sharing those two scriptures a bit later from John chapter 3, verses 3 and 16. So, praise God. Uh, thank you, Jesus, our Lord and Saviour, the Christ. Matthew 1, 21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. And the next slide is, A very merry, a very merry Christmas to all. Yeah. Never take the Christ out of Christmas. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm going to share a message with you this morning. This is just a one-hour service, and uh, I've got a, a, a short message that I hope will uh, truly bless you this morning. And as I say, good morning and a very Merry Christmas to all. To some of us, Christmas time is a merry time, meaning joyous. The word merry means joyous. And Christmas can be truly can be the greatest time of the year. However, sadly to others, it can be a very sad and emotional time of the year as some of us miss loved ones um, who may have passed on in the last 12 months, those who may have, uh, who live far away from us or family and friends who may be overseas and cannot be with us at this time of year. And separation from loved ones can be a very sad an emotional time, especially at Christmas time. And I can guarantee you, being separated from family and friends truly fails into insignificance as painful and as emotional as it can be, yet it will never and can never be compared to being eternally separated from God the Father. I'm sure that you're well aware that sin separated man from God. I said sin separated man from God. Man's problem was truly a sin problem. When Adam fell in the Garden of Eden, that resulted in man being separated from God the Father. The only way man could be reconciled back to God the Father was through the suffering and sacrifice of a saviour. And that Saviour is the Son of God, and His name is Jesus. Praise His name. The Son of God, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, as it declares in John 1, 29. I've got a scripture on the screen for you here from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. And it reads, For God made Christ, 
who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. And that is why as Christians we celebrate Christmas because John, because, sorry, my, uh, that is why as Christians we celebrate Christmas because as it declares in John 3.16, 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave. And God gave the greatest gift. He gave the greatest gift of all, his one and only son, Jesus. And by us having faith in Jesus, we can be reconciled to God the Father. What I truly love about Christmas is that it's a time of giving, a giving of great gifts. Giving gifts is a great part of Christmas. Receiving them is even better. Amen? <laughs> Some people say the more you love someone, the more you spend on a gift. When you're single and dating someone, you spend big bucks. You spend really big dollars to show them how much you love them. After you get married, some people, I said some people, after you get married, they don't show that love so much. They might pay, why I say, a pack of Kit Kats. A pack of Tic Tacs. What do they say? They put into you a card attached, and they say, Merry Christmas, you have bad breath, enjoy. Uh, uh, for the record, my wife never buys me Tic Tacs, but she buys me the Woolies brand because they're 50 cents cheaper. Uh, I'm only joking, my wife never buys me Tic Tacs. In fact, she doesn't buy me anything. Uh, I'm only joking. She buys me the best gifts. But she does really buy me great gifts. But when it comes to buying gifts, honestly, it's sometimes very difficult to buy something for someone, something that they really need. It's easy just to buy anything, but what do people truly need? As I said before, Christmas time is really about giving. And we know that God gave us the greatest gift of all. When we buy Christmas gifts at Christmas time, it's a, it's a true celebration and commemoration of the greatest gift ever given. A gift that we all truly needed. And God gave the greatest gift of all, his one and only son, Jesus. We know that mankind had a problem. And mankind had a sin problem. It was a problem of sin and separation from God the Father. And it could only, could only be fixed through a gift. And a gift that we all truly needed. Mankind had a problem of sin and separation. And man's problem wasn't a physical problem. Because if it was a physical problem, God would have sent a physician. But God did send the great physician, and his name is Jesus. Man's kind problem wasn't a natural problem. Otherwise, God would have sent a naturopath. But God did send one who showed mighty supernatural signs, wonders, and miracles. And truly, man's kind problem wasn't a bad breath problem. Otherwise, he would have given us Tic Tac. <laughs> By the way, I don't have a commercial agreement with Ferrera, the makers of Tic Tacs. Um, more importantly, hopefully, I don't have bad breath. Well, hopefully not. I did wash my face quite well. Man's problem. Man's problem was something worse. Mankind's problem was something much worse than bad breath. Yet it was something that truly stank. And that thing which stinks is sin. I want you to look at this scripture up here from Jude chapter 1. And it reads, Go easy on those who hesitate in the faith. Go after those who take the wrong way. Be tender with sinners, but not soft on sin. The sin itself stinks to high heaven. Mankind's problem was a stinky, smelling sin problem. And the only way that that sin could be wiped out was through the sacrifice of the sinless Saviour. If you believe that, can you say amen? amen? You know, God truly gave us the gift of His Son Jesus to save the world from their sin. God gave us the Saviour to save His people from their sins. As we know, sin separated us from God. 
Sin had a sting, and the sting of sin was death. It was an eternal death, eternal separation with that sin in our lives. And in order for us to be rescued, in order for us to be saved from our sins, God gave, made a way and he gave us his son, Jesus. Jesus, he came and he was born to die, death on a cross, to pay the price for our sins with the power of his precious sinless blood. Jesus shed his blood and he gave his very life to pay the price for our sins so that we could be saved, we could be rescued, and we could be reconciled back to God the Father. Jesus truly is the greatest gift ever given. And it was a very, very valuable gift because it cost him everything. It cost him his very life. By laying down his life, Jesus showed the whole world how much God truly loves us because he gave us his one and only son. John 3.16, a very famous verse. Most people know this verse. They see it around. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. God gave his Son to rescue the world. He gave his Son to reconcile the world to him. And this morning, I'm asking you, if you've never received that gift, the gift of salvation and reconciliation through faith and through repentance, you can receive the gift of salvation today. If you've never taken hold of that gift, if you've never received that gift, the free gift of salvation through trusting and believing in God's Son, Jesus, this morning, this joyous Christmas morning, I'm offering you to take hold of that gift and to receive Jesus today into your heart and make him Lord and Saviour of your life. All he asks us to do is to repent, to change your mind, to believe in him and to follow him. And it's all by faith. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9 says, it says, For by grace we have been saved through faith. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And the way you activate that faith, the way you become born again is very simple. It's so important that we must know that we must be born again. John chapter 3 tells us that unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God and he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And the way you activate your faith and receive that gift is very simple. You have to believe in your heart and you have to confess with your mouth. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, verses 9 to 10, it says that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you will be saved. So this morning as I wrapped up this wonderful Christmas message, as we celebrate the birth of the Saviour, I truly pray that if you've never received Jesus, or you need to recommit your life to Him today, that you make a decision to do that this very Christmas morning. 